Hi, I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins from YourBlackWorld.com, and uh, today is um, April 16th, 2012. It's a Monday morning, and I'm in St. Louis, uh, about to head over to um, Michigan today. That's right. And I, I saw this this really interesting story um, on one of our sites, What the Hail, uh, where one of our bloggers wrote about Leandria Johnson, who is the winner of the Sunday Best uh, gospel competition, and uh, in the, she's the good little church girl, of course, and the church girl finally revealed that the little bump in her stomach was not because she'd eaten too many burritos, but because she is a, going to have another baby, she's unmarried, she's already got three kids, and she's 29 years old and single, and so there was a lot of flap about that, what that means, if it, if it means anything at all, and so to really talk about that, I brought in one of our uh, contributing editors. Uh, Noma Langa Mushali Moses, uh, and she has a few things to say about that. How are you today, Noma Langa? I'm doing great, boys. How are you? I'm doing very well, very well. Now, what do we what do we really make of this um, with this young woman having another baby? Um, you know, she's never been married. Uh, she wins a gospel competition, and from the last time I checked, there wasn't anything in the in the black church that says that you should go out and have a bunch of babies and and not be married or not even try or be close to be married or anything like that. Um, does this make her some kind of a hypocrite, or or is this sort of just par for the course these days? Um, boys, I think that we always have to consider that um, sometimes there's a discrepancy between what people say and what they actually do. Um, I personally believe that um, as a young woman, and you of course know that I mentor a lot of young women, I believe that they should take responsibility for their own health and for their own well-being. Uh, my first information when I heard about this is that this woman Although now we're seeing the results being that she's pregnant, I'm starting to be concerned for her, meaning that she may have compromised her health at some point, uh, in that she she exposed herself to disease or she exposed herself to unprotected uh, int- intimacies, or we polite to call it. Um, that's my first concern. The second thing then is um, if she has positioned herself as a role model, then um, she's fallen short, and there's no two ways about that. But at the same time, we have to also understand that people are human beings. We're subject to making wrong judgments. We're subject to making errors. Even Mm -hmm. when we stand on one end of the spectrum, we can make an error that is all the way on the other end of the spectrum. Mm, interesting. Well, you know, it, it is funny because you, um, you know, all of us who, who, who are associated with the black church, we know people that, um, that are very good at, you know, at praising the Lord on Sundays and, and really, really being truly deeply connected to everything, hanging on every word that the pastor says, everything that, that, that goes on in church, they're, they're in it. You know, you hear praise the Lord in every other sentence, but then when you see the way they live, it's very different from, um, from what they profess to believe in church. And then pe- what people will say, they're, they're usually, you know, good loopholes for that behavior, right? It's like, well, he who is without sin cast the first first stone. I guess that's what how it goes. Or or uh, you know uh, you can't judge me. God can judge me. That kind of thing. And I find that interesting because it almost like, it's almost a way of saying, look, you know, I am part of the church. I have the right to to somehow behave as if I am doing something that is superior to what you're doing. If you're not in the church, but if you catch me living in a way that is highly inconsistent with the values that I claim to promote. Well, you don't have any right to say anything, and we're none of us are perfect, and we're all born in sin, and all sin is the same. And so, if you stepped on a bug, then that's the same as my going out and killing five people. So stop it, quit hating, etc. So I, I think that that's 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 kind of interesting too. Like that's what I first thought about when I when I saw this. But then you know the issues you brought up about the health. Um, I think that's something that um, that that really I think a lot of people don't want to think about. But it's absolutely true. I mean, if you look at all the statistics right now, black women are catching STDs at a rampant rate, not just HIV. You know, everybody's worried about catching HIV, but I'll tell you, I don't think gonorrhea, chlamydia, <laughs> syphilis, and herpes, and HPV are that much fun out, fun out there. Some of those diseases can kill you. So I, I, I think that you're right, that um, when you see someone that has baby after baby, I mean, I think this is her fourth child. This will be her fourth child uh, as, as an unmarried 29-year-old woman. Um, you have to really think about that. I mean, do you think that... 
uh, maybe women of color, uh, you know, in the midst of love and sex and romance, that maybe there is a cultural, um, a cultural, uh, how can I say this, cultural persuasion, if you will, to sort of, you know, kind of forget about those things and let those things go and to just trust individuals who don't deserve to be trusted? Well, I think if you, if this young woman is having her fourth child, um, I'm going to assume that these are unplanned pregnancies. And mm-hmm. if it's unplanned, again, that always to me sends up a red flag that this woman is jeopardizing her health. Um, mm-hmm. and she's jeopardizing her well-being. Um, I personally can't make judgments about whether a woman should wait until she's married or not. It depends on her belief system and her own convictions whether she chooses to have a child or not. I'm about making decisions in your life based on what you say you believe in. Now, because she was on a gospel show, we're already drawing the assumption that she's uh, her philosophy is a Christian one, and that one is clear. So what it tells me is that she's uh, made an error in judgment, and we're now seeing the consequences of that. Um, I think that she should be no less accountable than um, anybody else. She's giving us an opportunity to address an issue that needs to be addressed. Um, Whether you choose to have sex or not is your choice, but you need to protect yourself. And again, I'm always always going to be on the perspective of um, what's good for this young woman. Um, That's my perspective. How Are are young women doing in their lives what they say they want? Um, in other words, did she want to have four kids by 29? I doubt. I don't think so. So to me, it's telling me that she's making decisions that are not uh, taking her life where she wants to go. She, it's telling me that she's putting her life in danger um, by making decisions. And we can't let people take that cop out of don't judge me because uh, the truth is there are consequences to those actions. The consequences to those actions, and we have to talk about those consequences. The truth is, you now have a child who's going to grow up in what I'm assuming is going to be a single parent home. We already know the statistics that back up what happens to those children who come into homes where they're unplanned and um, they have only one parent instead of two. We already know that. We already know what the end of that is. So we can't back away from saying what you're doing is right or wrong because we're scared to be called, uh, you know, judgmental or whatever it is. The truth is there are consequences to that. We have to talk about those consequences. We have to make better decisions. We have to guide young women to make better decisions. I, I don't shy away from that. The young women that I mentor that I that look up to me, I always tell them the truth. If you're not protecting yourself, I'm going to hold you responsible for that. I'm going to call you out. And mm-hmm. if this young woman was somebody who was subject to my mentorship, I wouldn't um, mince words with her. I mean, it's done, and she now has to deal with what is done. But we can't back away from telling her that what you're doing is not the right thing to do. Um, and if she's positioned herself as a role model, she's not setting the right example. That's just the truth. Well, I agree. I agree. And I think that um, you, you mentioned that the, the best interest of the mother is very important. And I agree with that. And I think um, and I also agree that the best interest of the children is just as important as, as her interest, e- even more so, in, in my opinion. I think that what's so interesting to me is that when you have uh, so many people that are making babies that, that come into unstable situations, whether you talk about the men who, who uh, you know, who, who impreg- seem to impregnate half the world, some of these guys. I mean, I know guys like that eight kids with six women and don't even care, can't afford to take care of those kids, you know, or don't have the time to spend with those kids, don't take the time anyway, uh, you know, and, and then, you know, so, you know, then you have the women that sort of allow that to happen as well. Uh, you know, it bothers me because I, I think, you know, to myself, I'm thinking, you don't love those kids. I mean, there's no way you can, you love yourself. And maybe you, somehow your attachment to the kids is interpreted as love, but that's not love. That's something other, something else because if, if I love you, there's no way I'm going to put you in, or bring you into the world in a situation that is, you know, complete chaos where you are less likely to succeed. You're going to grow up very, you know, sad and, 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 and sort of wishing that you had both parents in the house. You're going to feel bad when you see the other kids and their, their dads come pick them up at school and you don't have a dad or, or whatever. And I think that, uh, you know, anybody who says, oh, well, my child does not need the dad or my or we can I can do this all by myself. 
that's a problem to me because you're not really taking the child's vote on this. You're not asking the child what they think. You're you're saying what you think as this so-called strong black woman or whatever it is that that you are. And the same thing is true for the men. I mean, I think the men, you know, any man out here who has more than two or three kids and and, and that he's not taken care of, I want to just smack him upside the head because you are creating children that have almost no ability to be successful. They're gonna they're more likely to end up as menaces to society. They're gonna fill up the prison cells, they're gonna fill up the welfare roles, they're not gonna be well educated. And not in every case. We know that there are exceptions, but the the bottom line reality is that kids that don't have proper parental guidance are far less likely to be successful. And we have to get away from accepting this kind of behavior. So I, I think that when you talk about this young woman, I don't know how she's raising her kids. I don't know what the circumstances were for her and the three kids, but I think that there certainly is room to have that conversation about whether or not it's appropriate for her to be positioned as this Christian role model when she is making these choices that, that are putting her in, in these weird situations. Because, you know, uh, you know, I, I, I never got married and I, I've had sex. And I had a child when I was 18, but after that I learned that I started putting on condoms or I kept the condoms on even, even then, but the, the, not to give too much information. But the fact is that, um, it didn't happen again because I learned from my mistake and, and I didn't want to repeat the mistake. So when you have people that have three, four, five kids and they're, you know, and, and, and they're, they're unplanned pregnancies, well, you know that somebody's not wearing condoms as much as they should. And I think that that's, um, that's a problem. So uh, thank you um, very much, uh, Noma Langa. Did you have anything else you, you wanted to add before I let you? I'll let you get the last word. Uh, um, all I wanted to say, boys, is I just wanted to be clear that this is not um, an attack on this young woman. Uh, we're talking about a behavior, um, and we're talking about uh, making choices that move us towards our goals. This young woman, I do not believe, her intention was to end up in her 20s with four children um, without a father. My perspective on women's empowerment, whether it's young, old, or even older women, is that we make choices in our lives that move us towards our goals. That's all That's all we have to focus on. I know nobody wants um, an unplanned pregnancy, and I know nobody wants to do this. So all I'm saying is make decisions uh, that move you towards your goals. Mm-hmm. I love it. I think that's good advice. I mean, it's as simple as that. And, um, and I think that, um, that the power of a parent is, 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 is amazing. And I think that the job of the mother is the most important job in the universe, in my opinion. The mother is the first teacher. The mother shapes your whole reality. If you, if your mother shapes your reality in a distorted way, then you're going to be a distorted person. Uh, and if your mother shapes your reality in a powerful way, then you have a very good chance of being a powerful person. So, uh, so we, we gotta take that job of the mother very much more seriously and we've also gotta respect the job of the father and make sure that we're bringing our children into situations where they have a good chance to be successful. This is not to attack the, the, the great single mothers that are out there, but you gotta remember that what you want or what you think is best or what you, what, what the path you think is easiest and, and, and most e- efficient may not be the best path for your child. So, uh, take your child into Absolutely. consideration when you make those decisions. So thank you very much, Nolan Langa. I truly appreciate your time. My pleasure. All right, and um, that's Noma Langa Mushali Moses. She, she's a contributor at YourBlackWorld.com, and she is also um, uh, a great role model and a mentor for young women. And she does a lot of different things. And I, 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 one day I'll tell you her whole resume, but today we'll just I'll keep it short so I don't embarrass her. But uh, her website is NomaLanga.com, and uh, you should check her out because she's got a lot of great things to say. So uh, thank you all for checking us out at YourBlackWorld.com. And until we meet again, stay strong, be blessed, and be educated. We are gone. Peace.